Hello, so this is a new episode of me trying to get to 2600. So we are almost standing at 2200. So I hope this one goes well. We're playing as a 1972 player. I hope this guy is here with us <laughs> to play. If not, I will abort this one. I will, I will try to find another opponent. So yeah, it seems like this guy is not here. Let's try to find a new opponent. So, meanwhile we're searching for a new opponent. <laughs> which we found very quickly. Yeah, I just wanted to say that uh, if you have some suggestions uh, for improvements or for uh, new things that I should do, should I play other time controls or other chess variants, I'm very, I would be very happy to hear it. So we have another uh, 96 here. Okay, let me stick to my Rosolimo variation. I think it's no secret anymore that I play this. Okay, now he played his pawn to e6. This is one of the one of the main lines. And now I think in the other game I took the knight on c6, played for the pawn structure. I think it went well. Um but let's let's play the other main line now which is short castle. So what is nice about the Rosolimo Sicilian, that white in general can always choose between two types of positions, whether he just wants to play for simple development or he wants to play for the pawn structure damage with the bishop takes on c6. Now I played this move knight to f6, which is not, sh should not be the right move. Black actually usually plays knight to e7, which is the whole idea of the move e6 to be able to recapture the knight on c6 with the knight so not damaging the pawn structure so actually here I'm quite puzzled how should I punish this mistake or at least inaccuracy by him so obviously my pawn is under attack so I can defend it in all kinds of ways. I can play rook e1. I can actually also just advance with e5. Also looks tempting. I think rook e1 maybe is the most flexible move. Let's try rook e1. I think I can also. Uh, and the thing that I, c I can also always take on c6 whenever I like. So it's always an option. Now he played bishop e7, so he's just simply developing his pieces, which is sensible in a way. So once again, I'm having this choice whether to go for this plan with building up a strong pawn center with c3 and d4, or should I just take on c6 and play for the pawn structure damage? Hmm. And once again I can consider this move e5, which is always tempting. Okay, let's let's damage his pawn structure. Let's see what will happen. So now the game in general becomes very positional. So black will have the two bishops advantage. Uh, and I will have the more compact pawn structure. I, now he has these double pawns. And later on in the game I will try to play against those double pawns. So I think I will just do the same thing I did in the other game. Let's develop the bishop to b2. Seems like a nice square for the bishop. Somewhere around here, this diagonal looks very sensible to put it there. Now he needs to decide what he wants to do with his pawn on d7. If he would like to 
place it on d6 or d5 nope not so d6 or d5 so this is actually black's main choice here you can other also you can also consider other plans but i don't see too much other ideas for him also looks how badly this bishop on b7 stands yeah now he played d6 and this is actually an important moment i think i also mentioned it in the other a video featuring the Rosolimo Sicilian. So if Black is in time to play this move from e6 to e5, it would be completely fine. So it's actually very important for White to play the move e5 e5 first. So to keep this long diagonal opened and to exchange those d6 and e5 pawns. And in this way, I even furthermore weaken his double pawns because now they're also isolated. So yeah, he played knight d5, but he has no threat, so I think I will just keep developing my pieces. Now my knight d2, I like it there because it's quite flexible. It can go to c4 to put pressure on the pawn on d6. It can also go to e4 if I need. So I keep my options this way. And I don't think black can suffer forever the spawn on e5. So I think now or on the next move, you will have to you will have to do something about this spawn. So he played a5, perhaps trying to create some counterplay on this side of the board. But it's not bothering me that much. I can actually just continue with my plan of knight c4 or once again knight to e4 putting further pressure on the pawn on d6 yeah so this is the point where I'm not so sure what should I do let's go with my intuition I kind of like the knight on c4 more than e4 because then on e4 I slightly block my rook on e1 also the knight on c4 is more stable because there is no black pawn which can potentially uh, drive him away. So this is an eternal square for the knight. Now he finally took me. So I think I have four ways to take but I'm almost sure that I want to take this way. Because now if I need I can bring my queen out to the game. He played bishop to g6, a uh, f6, sorry. So this is a sensible move, trying to put his bishop on a square which which would do some um, defensive job on his king. But he has no threat because I don't think he really would like to take me. So yeah, once again I have a couple of choices. I could just go with my plan with queen g4 trying to build up some attack on the king side which is perhaps the most logical move here even though it would be quite difficult to attack him on the king side because his pawn structure there is very solid but obviously I can try what other ideas I can have I can as always a, a typical um, let's say alternative would be to play the move a4 myself thus blocking all kinds of possibilities for any counterplay from him this is also possible and yeah I don't see too many other choices so um okay I'm getting low on time so I will just make what seems to be most logical to me. I will go with my intuition. Let's play a4. One thing that I like about this move that I also fix his weakness on a5. So now this pawn cannot move. And this becomes a permanent weakness that I can put pressure on. And it's rather a liability for him. So he played queen to c7, but now that he doesn't have any counterplay, I think I will proceed with my own plans on the king side. 
So so after putting my queen on g4, my next moves would be something like maybe rook e2 with the idea to double the rooks on the e-file. And after I will finish my development of my pieces and maximizing the potential of all of them, I will I would also I will try to start to think about how to attack exactly. But for now, once again, I don't see any concrete uh, threats that I create for him. So I just focusing on strengthening my position. Let let's see what he does. So I think at the moment he disconnected. I hope. You will be back soon because it's quite an interesting position. I like my position as white. I think he's better because of black having a lot of weaknesses and his bishop on b7 is a very bad piece in contrast, in contrast to my bishop on b2 which is actually very nice on this diagonal. So maybe actually what black's best idea here is to try to play bishop a6 with the idea to exchange this bishop on c4 so to release some of the pressure he chose to play knight to b4 so he was threatening to take my pawn on c2 so, so I just protected it with my rook once again preparing doubling my rooks on the e file so in a way I was forced to play rook e2 but I'm not too unhappy about it because this was part of my plan anyways. So another reason I think white is better here is because black has no counterplay against against my pieces so it's quite easy for me to play and for him it's much more difficult to make choices because white has no weaknesses only this pawn on c2 is slightly weak because he is not protected by any other pawns but it should be quite easy for me to defend this one yeah so now he took on c4 now i have two good options i can take with the queen with the idea to switch to putting pressure on his pawns on the queen side especially this pawn on c5 this looks tempting i can also try to take with the knight so with the idea to exchange those bishops and when the, this bishop on f6 is gone it would be maybe easier for me to um, to create some attack on his king so yes both of them seems very good to me let me see what I like more I think I will take with the queen just because I've spotted some tactical uh, new ones. Let's take with the queen. Now I'm just threatening to take the pawn. So he's probably has to defend it either with the bishop or the queen. He need to make some move to protect this pawn, that's for sure. And then the question is whether I have something but he decided to completely ignore my threat and to play rook to d8 and my question is why cannot I just take this pawn yeah I think I will just take it I don't see any reason not to he will have the move rook d5 but I have enough defenders on the knight on e5 I have three defenders and he has three attackers so I'm completely okay there and it seems to me I just took a pawn for free which was a doubled pawn so it's not like black lost all of his chances but still I don't see any any special compensation that black has 
for the fact that he is a pawn down now. So he played rook to f to d8. So my question is, does black has a threat here? So I don't see any obvious threats. Maybe you have some subtle threats, but I don't see anything special. So what I would like to do is I would like to play this prophylactic move, bishop a1. So it might look a little bit strange to put the bishop on the corner, but the idea is that now the bishop is protected. So I don't have any tactical problems on this diagonal. Okay, I'm getting low on time, so I think from this moment I will stick to making quick moves. So we both play the useful moves right now. So he played this pawn to h6 to create himself a square for the king and I've played a similar move g3 once again with a similar idea. So I would like to exchange some pieces. Let's play knight f3. I want to get rid of those bishops. That's one of the the reasons that I've played bishop to a1 is to be able to play this move later. Now I should have a relatively safe pawn up. Okay, my rook on a1 is now a bit silly, but on the next move I, I will just bring it back to e1. So I'm not too concerned about this. Now next step, what I would really like to do is to exchange the queens. If I manage to get that, I think it would make my job job of winning the game that much easier. So, let's see. I think I have an opportunity to exchange one pair of rooks, so I think I will go for it. Now he probably wants to place his knight, oh, he wants to go this way. Yeah, but this is uh, more than okay with me to exchange the knights. Generally, in this position, I would like just to exchange everything and to reach a pawn endgame, in which it would be very easy for me to win with my extra pawn. But I'm quite low on time, so from now on, from now on it would become slightly tricky for me to play. Okay, but now I just blundered his queen. <laughs> oh, and he's keeping keep on playing. That it's that is cute for sure. So uh <laughs> So he's not trusting my abilities to win with 42 seconds on the clock. Come on. I I think a lot of people just keep playing after they already are losing just out of stress or being unhappy with the way that the game went. So they just keep on playing so to give themselves like a small comfort that they feel that they did not lose too easily. But yeah, this is just nothing. And they also have these small hopes of getting a stalemate. But for this reason I also I always keep one or two pawns alive for the opponent in such case. And uh, this way they never had uh, such chances to make a stalemate. So this one was... Uh, I would say not too easy but like a nice positional game so uh, yeah, I think he played quite badly in the opening this move d6 was quite unfortunate 
and after e5 this pawn structure which we got in the game with this with these three pawns very weakened is really not um, not optimal for him and I, I feel like later on I just increased my advantage with each move yeah actually in this position the computer also already says that I have almost a plus one advantage so white's positional advantage is actually so significant that computer thinks I'm a pawn up so this is nice to know and then now we blundered the spawn with rook d8 actually my main idea was that if he will play a move like queen a7 to protect the pawn on c5 I thought that here I, I could else actually play the move pawn to c3 uh, and to take the pawn next move but the computer is not too impressed uh, but anyway after he lost the pawn it became quite easy from that moment on so yeah nice game not too easy not too difficult of course, in at, that, at this moment, he just blundered his queen and made my job much easier. I think it would be nice to see whether I could win such position with uh, 45 seconds on the clock or whatever time amount I had in this, in this, um, at this moment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.